Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Hello. This is a horror movie podcast. We talk about horror films every week. We get together, you know, we've watched a movie, we talk about it. It's that simple. It is the Octoberthon. It is the month of horror and because of that there's a bunch of extra episodes and we always like to work our way through a smaller franchise and of course this month, this year, we have been doing the Evil Dead franchise. We have done Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. It is time for the fourth and final film in the franchise as of now and that is Evil Dead from 2013 uh, directed by Fede Alvarez and starring Jane Levi. So we're going to get into it. We'll start spoiler free as we always do. We'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers and yeah so i mean the premise of course is very similar to the first evil dead it's a group of friends at a cabin in the woods although notably this does give them a different reason for being there this is not just them hanging out for a weekend to (laughs) get drunk or whatever this is very different in the premise here where we have the characters going because the main character of mia is a drug addict and they want to have her go cold turkey and they've tried this before it's been unsuccessful so then their idea is to do it in the middle of nowhere, in the wilderness, so she can't just, you know, run off and go somewhere else. It's their attempt to kind of have an intervention of sorts and give her a chance to, to heal and get through this difficult time. So uh, that's why they're actually there. Uh, also, David's one of the main characters. That's her brother. And then they've got some friends there, of course, as well. Uh, and that kind of gives us our main cast. Which So it's interesting is that this is not a remake in the sense that there's no Ash. This is not them trying to redo the same characters, and which is arguably one of his biggest strengths, is that he decides not to do that. Uh, which is why I, I don't like calling this a remake, it's more of a reboot than a remake, because it doesn't try to actually redo any of those things. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll get into it, of course, and talk about everything that it does, and the tone that it takes, and uh, how different it is, and all that stuff. But uh, Tim! Yeah? How do you feel about Evil Dead 2013? Oh, uh, I'm a big fan. I absolutely love it. It's, uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, again, you know, I absolutely love the, you know, Raimi Bruce Campbell trilogy. That's, you know, one of my favorites. So I, I do admit I was extremely hesitant going into this movie. Uh, you know, this was during the era of bad remakes and the idea that they're, you know, remaking one of my favorite franchises, uh, or you know, whatever well, you want to say, re- it reboot so, or whatever. It just so happens that this very month we just did the Friday the Thirteenth and the Nightmare on Elm Street remakes, which were yeah. notably <laughs> only a couple of. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street was twenty ten. This is twenty thirteen. So yeah, it's just yeah. right at the tail end of that era. <clears throat> um. So yeah, I I was very cautious going in, but uh, I mean, I think pretty quickly I was on board. I I think the opening sequence in this movie is uh really really good. Um. You know, it's beautifully shot, and then, uh, you know, it's uh, just an extremely brutal movie. Like, my God, the, like, the violence in this, it really gets under your skin in, in a way that, like, you know, other <laughs> it, movies... <laughs> it gets under their skin at times as well. Oh, yeah, that, totally. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't know, like, this movie makes me wince in, like, ways that not a lot of other movies <laughs> really do. Like, you know, the, so many horror movies, like, you know, like, like, I feel very desensitized to, like, a lot of gore, but, like, e- a lot of times even gory movies kind of play it safe, you know? Like, just very cleanly chopping off someone's head and then having blood spurt from the neck is not that, like, big a deal. But, like, the stuff they do in this movie is just, like, it just is, like, disgusting. It just feels, like, very visceral and mean. And, um, yeah, and I think the biggest point, you know, that y- you mentioned earlier is um, they're not just trying to you know redo uh the same things that we've seen in the other films they're not trying to you know get some uncharismatic actor to play ash uh and do like a job that's not as good you know it's um it's just taking similar concepts but being its own thing and it feels different and and that way it's like yeah you can watch it and enjoy it without the stigma of having to you know think like oh well it's not as good as the original uh it's uh yeah it stands out on its own but um no i mean it's you know something i've seen quite a bit now and uh it it still feels you know super uh fun and creepy and you know bloody and visceral uh, every time i watch it so yeah now this is a a great film i really really do enjoy it yeah i'm going to start off with a bold take i this is my favorite evil dead movie (gasps) oh my god 
<laughs> I like this more than the other three. And I know that's like such a, a weird... Because I did not expect that. Because likewise, I went into this in mm-hmm. theaters 2013. Kind of, kind of with a chip in my shoulder. Kind of like, yeah. all right, what you got? Prove your, <laughs> prove your worth. Prove to me that you should exist. Kind of attitude. And, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't actually sold as quickly as you were, I don't think. I, when, I, when I first saw this, I, I really like the opening scene now. And we'll talk about that when we go through it. But... Oh, I, I, there's a, there's, you know, there's a, well, there's interest in the characters. It's just doing okay. It's not, it's not doing anything bad. It's not doing anything to upset me or anything like that. But every so often, the, the music would do a little bit of a piano thing. It was making me think of like other like movies, a little you know, not good movies, like bad movies that would have kind of like, oh, we're trying to make you care about the characters' turmoil and the piano's yeah. going. But it won me over. The further this goes, because this is one thing that I noticed, especially on this watch is that the pacing in this movie is exceptional. Because it starts off slowly interesting the characters, given as what they're going through, why they're here, what they're doing, and it builds up to, like, you know, the first sort of dead eight and the infection and yada yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah. And once it starts to, like, get creepier and more violent, it keeps escalating. The escalation in this mm-hmm. movie is perfect to the point where once you get to about halfway through, it's like a, th- it's just a thrill ride till the end. That does, you know, sure. it only slows down just enough for you to catch your breath, but never long enough to ever even remotely feel like you're waiting for the next big thing to happen. Uh, yeah. It just keeps, like, going up and up. It adds its own twist to the mythology. Uh, the ending is bombastic. Uh, you mentioned the gore. The gore is phenomenal. I think when I first saw this, the scene that basically... Where I stopped, like... It's not like there wasn't good things before then, because there absolutely is, especially, you know, appreciating it on rewatches. But <clears throat> I think it's the scene in the bathroom on the first watch where I went, I think I kind of love this. Like, I, th- <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think I'm really into this, because I wasn't really sure what to think up until that point. And there's a moment in the bathroom where there's just, like, you know, bashing and stabbing and all sorts. We'll get into the details later where yeah. I'm like, I think this movie's great. <laughs> and I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know when it turned great, but I think it's great. And uh, from that point, and there's so many movies that I feel like will have like a peak like that, either in the first third or halfway through. And then the ending's almost like unsatisfying because it never quite reaches the same peak again. It, you know, it feels like, okay, you peaked in the middle, the, end, the rest of it's okay, but it's not as good as that one big scene. And there's so many movies, not even just horror movies. I mean, the example I always use is Superman Returns. You have that great plane sequence and the rest of it's just boring shit. <laughs> right um yeah. it's a really weird example but it's it, you know it's just it kind of like there's so many horror movies where they'll have that one big crazy sequence but it'll be quite early on and then the rest of it will never quite live up to it the final act yeah. of this thing is perfect it's perfect and crazy oh, and it's it so good yeah everything that you want it to it's it's wonderful it's wonderful yeah no i mean i totally agree like uh yeah like i, I wouldn't go as far as to say yeah, it's my favorite in the series, and part of that is just because I have so much uh, nostalgia, you know, for uh, the original movies. But I, I mean, at the same time, this movie is so good that I wouldn't like call you crazy for liking it the best. Like it, it is, you know, exceptionally well. Uh, so yeah, and that's a huge credit. Uh, I mean, again, like you know, this is like a huge. I, I mean, maybe to like you know casual fans uh you know not a lot of people maybe know like what evil dead is but like in the horror community you know this is kind of like a that's like a sacred you know like trilogy like the idea of remaking it is uh insane so just the fact that you know they made something that's not just watchable but actually like legitimately great is just it's really a testament to uh you know how good of a filmmaker uh you know fetty alvarez is and uh you know how great um you know jane levi is um you know, like, like, again, uh, you know, at first you kind of feel like, oh man, like, what would the series be like without Ash? But I mean, like, I would totally be down in this rebooted universe to see, like, you know, what adventures Mia goes on, you know, like, if there's, like, other instances with her uh, tackling deadites, because, like, she is such a, so cool and such a badass by the end, and, you know, that final uh, scene just really makes you root for her. Um, if I maybe have any type of complaint or criticism um and i guess to be fair you could uh you know chalk this up to the original movies as well but um i i feel like i really don't get much um like i I don't really get to know the other characters that well so maybe it's a a little hard to care too much about them 
Um, but I mean, it's yeah. not like it, it's not like a, a huge deal breaker or anything. Like, I mean, you get enough to know, like, you know, like the kind of people they are and stuff. Uh, but it's just maybe I don't know, not enough to like they don't like have like you know uh, maybe like cool moments or cool lines or whatever. But I mean, that's a very very small you know nitpick in the grand scheme of the movie. Yeah, I mean, the originals are all just as guilty as that. I mean, every, every one totally, Ash yeah. in the originals is just kind of forgettable. And hell, in, yeah. the, in the original film, Ash is not even that developed yeah, the on first his own. One. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, but like this, it's like very, like Mia is very uh, memorable in that. Like, uh, you know, even stuff like, uh, you know, her brother, like, doesn't feel like, you know, even though he arguably could be like the main character of the movie, you could even say, like, it's he still doesn't really feel as like, cool or as memorable but again that's just a very minor thing i mean the whole thing is about mia and her her like drug addiction and yeah like because the, the whole thing because they set up this premise at the start the, the whole thing actually works as a metaphor for going going through like the idea of withdrawal oh, sure. and because yeah. because I, I don't know if this is on point or on the nose as uh because you know that scene in shauna dead where they kind of slyly describe the rest of the movie where they're sitting in the pub and he says, oh, this is what we'll uh, do tomorrow. And he's like, oh, we'll do this. We'll be back at the bar for shots. And it actually describes what the rest of the movie is, <laughs> even though it's in a different context from what you're saying. Um, yeah. There's a scene early on in this where the nurse character, Olivia, describes what going through withdrawal is going to be like. And I don't think it's as on the nose as that shot in the dead scene, but I mm -hmm. think she does kind of describe the rest of the movie. Uh, That's interesting. On her experience going through this withdrawal and how crazy she's going to feel and how she's going to, you know, want to leave and, you know, um, but she's going to come out on the other end, kind of thing. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure she does kind of like describe the rest of the film. I, 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 I almost want to go back to that scene and just listen to it again with the rest of the movie fresh in my mind, just to see yeah. if it does match up with uh, what she said. Um, and the idea that you know, like, that addiction, like, you know, destroys everyone around you. This is the effect that it has, and this is the hell that it puts you through. Like, the whole thing actually works as a metaphor, uh, at least, oh, totally. at, at least on a simple level, maybe. Not as in depth as some other movies would go, but um, no, that, this, works, yeah. this movie introduced me to Jane Levi, who I kind of ended up kind of looking for other stuff from. I ended up watching *The Burgatory*, which is a really fun sitcom that she's on. Um, cool. And then you know she's popped up in other things. Obviously, she's in *Don't Breathe*, which is the same director as this. Uh, we mm -hmm. reviewed that when it came out, so you can go and uh, check out that review if you want to go hunt that down. Um, but you know she's popped up in other things. She was in season one of *Castle Rock*. She, <laughs> uh, which was not a good show ultimately but you know she was good at I, well well i like the show uh I, I don't like her character i mean like i like she she was fine acting in it but i mean her character was way too forced <laughs> um the show was okay and then the ending completely ruined the whole yeah, thing yeah it wasn't good yeah. the, last, the last episode was complete garbage <laughs> of that season i never saw season two because the season, season one's ending just made me not want to watch a um, single second of it but yeah i i started season two and uh i didn't really like it it's like the the one thing i do like about the first season is that at least i i feel like they were trying to kind of do their own thing but then like the second season just turns into like fan fiction the show mm. it's uh like you know it's all about like um what's her face like eddie wilkes from misery like having this whole big adventure before like you know like uh misery starts which is just like i don't know i, I feel like really cringy but whatever <laughs> Yeah, I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it, but... Uh, no, she's very good in this. Uh, the effects are great, the, the gore's great. Uh, both in the sense that it looks really good from a, you know, like an effects point of view, but also just in the how inventive the actual nastiness of some of it is. Like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, where certain characters get things stabbed, or where... Oof. You know, like, just, just stuff like that, where it always feels very visceral, it feels very kind of... Uh, val it is shot so well, the cinematography does... There's so many little moments that I'd forgotten about when I was watching it again here, where, like, something as simple as, like, after Mia has her incident out in the forest, and she's, like, sitting in the, the bunk bed, and the way it's lit, and the way she, her, her head's back, and she's sort of like, we have to go out here now. And, and she's, she's sort of, like, looking down at him as she's her head's tilted back, and it just, the way she's lit, everything looks really good. When, she, when they, you know, we, we see, like, just down the cellar, there's a moment when they're closing the cellar when someone's down there, and you just see the uh, the person like just looking up through the cellar door, really creepily, mm -hmm. just standing there. There's just there's so many little moments that just are really effective visually. I'd forgotten how good the movie looked, uh, yeah. which is 
a credit to it. Um, and it's, okay. a different, it's a different type of creepiness to the original as well. Because the, the first one is the one you compare it to the most, I think, because the first one is yeah. the, the one that's the real horror movie of the trilogy. Whereas, And this, this is kind of doing this thing where it kind of honours what the intent of the original movie was. It mm. honours the sequels, not in the, the goofiness, but it does have some moments that kind of reference them. And, and like just, you know, in visuals or in actions. For example, yeah. there's, you know, they very quickly tease a chainsaw. There's a chainsaw in the shed, and it's like, hey. like So there's definitely things to conjure up things in your head, you know, moments and ideas from Evil Dead 2 uh, yeah. in your head. Even though it's not going for that tone, it's never trying to be funny. Uh, well, outside of maybe one or two moments of dark humour, but it's never, you know, it's never let's crack one-liners and... Yeah, and, and I like when it does have, like, a little nod or a reference. It's not like... You know, some movies do that and it feels so forced and it feels like, you know, sometimes like the actors are practically stopping the movie and then turning to the camera and winking, you know, it's a, it, it never gets like that. Like it's very organic and it's like, yeah, if you see the other movies, you, you can say like, oh, okay, that's a nice little nod. Uh, yeah, there's, then, a, there's yeah. A, like an old rundown car, like off next to the cabin, which is the car from the mm-hmm. original, uh, the necklace that he tries to give you know his sister at one point it's very similar to the necklace from the original movie that ash tries to give linda it's just little you know visual things like that that's kind of like yeah. hey if you if you recognize these are kind of funny notes but they're not uh you know using the same context uh mm-hmm. so but there's, there's definitely some big moments towards the end that feel like they're hey mem- you know not, like they're not just redoing things from the originals but they're kind of harking about like hey here's some of the ingredients that we've remixed into this movie <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to go into the spoilers, though, so I will take this time to mm-hmm. thank our Patreon producers at the time of recording. So thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palaces, David Shaw, Bored Now, Al Tribesman, Christopher Moy, Brett Williams, and David Brown. They are Patreon producers for the month at the time of recording, so uh, thank you to all them. them. You can be a producer for 20 or more dollars on patreon.com slash TV, but you can, of course, support us for much less than that. Uh, every dollar does count and matters a whole bunch and for one dollar per month you get access to an exclusive extra episode a bonus episode of streams after midnight every single month in fact this month for the october thon uh, we've got a tradition where we do four bonus episodes in the month so you get a lot but that back catalog uh which you know by the end of this month should be close to 30 i think um Ooh. you get access to all of that back catalog for one dollar per month uh, there's bonuses for other shows as well, of course. At the five dollar tier, you get to vote on an episode every month. You get early access to the episodes by a day, and then there's another vote as well at the ten dollar tier. So, if you want to have a look, there's something for you at every kind of level to have a look, see if you want to help support the content, keep everything coming, all that stuff. Um, but every every dollar is appreciated. Um, so yeah, thank you to all of our patrons, and yeah, so full spoilers then for Evil Dead 2013. So. Yeah, so we managed to set up. You know, she's there. She makes us vow to you know well, give up. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's important to talk about even before that. It starts with a, I guess, kind of like a flashback. Uh, oh yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't even think it's that much of a flashback. It may, I mean, for all we know, it's been like two weeks <laughs> since the um, scene. I mean, it always feels like it's in the past uh, to me, because it feels like I don't know. This is happening, and maybe, I mean, I I don't know if it's supposed to be the same area or what but i mean it always feels like i don't know very like more distant than the actual movie but i don't know i really do like this opening but scene a lot though it can be though because the characters like they mentioned that the cabin's been broken into since they've last been here and like all the stuff in the basements like the stuff that's happened in that time um i don't know i don't know dude uh, it feels like it's happened i don't know it feels like this is kind of a long time ago to me <laughs> No, it's a plot point in the movie because they say it's been broken into and they find all the stuff in the basement where the ritual took place. So it, it it's happened like within the last 10 years, say. Okay, I mean, in years, sure. But like, I don't know. If you're saying like days or weeks, I don't know, it doesn't really feel like that to me. Oh, sure. Well, but... no, I thought you meant it was like like a period piece. Like this was back in the 30s or something like that. <laughs> like definitely not that far back. Uh, but I mean... I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when it, when it's supposed to be, but it's definitely, obviously, you know, before they get to the cabin or whatever. But I mean, the the point is though, I I really like the scene. Yeah, but it's it's, <laughs> like after, I, it's after when they've been there as kids though, or with teenagers even, because we see photos of them in the cabin as teenagers and stuff. Okay. Uh, I mean, they could have bought the cabin or something. Uh, at some point after, whenever this took place, I don't know. 
But no, but that's the point, is that they, they acknowledge that it's been broken into, and it implies that this, this, this ritual that happened at the start took place after they've been here. This is, this is something that's uh, happened in this time. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I didn't get that. Continue, well, continue. So talk about the scene, talk about the scene. All right. No, I, I just think it's like a, I just think it's a, a great scene, and then, like, I, I just remember, like, being very, um, you know, you have this, like, woman uh, tied up, and, like, all these you know kind of feels like you know these like angry villagers and stuff uh all surrounding her and then um i i like that it's doing the it, look, it looks like she's the victim is the point right she, she looks like she's been like, yeah. captured and she's had this they're all doing the satanic ritual or something like that and and it's such like a different way to start it than like you know the other movies and uh, again like going into this blind when i didn't know what the movie was going to be like or what was going to happen uh I thought it was a real interesting way to start, and then I just I just absolutely love when you get the turn of yeah, like it it feels very much like an angry mob, uh, like you know, because it, it harkens back to like you know, like witch trials or something where you'd have an innocent person and this like uh you know dumb angry mob that doesn't know any better, uh, but then I, I like the turn in this where you know she seems innocent, innocent, and then it gets to a point where the demon comes out and it's like you know she. Uh, I, I forget the exact line, but you know she says like you know, like we'll swallow your soul or something, you know something along those lines or whatever. Well, no, no, uh, because she's doing the thing from the other movies where the deadites pretend to be normal again, right? She's yeah. pretending to be just this innocent girl, and her dad's there and saying, "This is, you know, I'm sorry, baby, but I have to do this." And then she says, "Oh, where's mom? Where's mom?" And it's like you killed her, and he keep, you know she keeps up the act for a long time. And I think what I like about it is the first time she says anything that's like sort of you know, not normal. And she still says it in a regular voice. She says yeah. something like, you know, like, um, I'm going to kill you too, or you're, you're all going to die, or whatever. She says something in a normal yeah. voice. Yeah. And then it's just, after, like, that moment, she then switches to the dead eye voice. But she says it in a normal voice first, which makes it sound creepier. Because it's, it's like, because you're waiting for the, the, you know, the turn to happen, right? At least if you know what Evil Dead is. If you've never seen an Evil Dead thing before, you're just sort of confused, and you're waiting for an explanation. Um, but I mean, even like, um, at, at least for me, like the first time watching it, like since, you know, it is remake reboot or whatever, you don't really know the exact direction they're going in yet. So I wasn't like, you know, I, I mean, I guess I wasn't thinking about it too much, but like, I wasn't totally sure exactly where it was going to go until, yeah, like you said, uh, even though it's her normal voice, once she, you know, starts saying those things, it's pretty obvious, like. Oh no, she is a deadite, and then I don't know. It's, it's just a it really got me excited when I was first watching it. Yeah, I think I think when I watched it the first time, it was when like I don't know. It was a point where I think once it was clear her dad was like involved in like assisting with this, it, it clicked yeah. to me that oh, she's a deadite. <clears throat> like she, she we've not seen her be a deadite yet, but she must be a deadite. Like I I got kind of what they were doing with it, but only once her dad was involved. Like before that, yeah. it just looked like someone some girl had been kidnapped and was was being tortured or whatever um but you know our main characters come to the cabin some time later so <laughs> upset him uh, <laughs> i mean I, I don't know maybe you're right but i mean i'm curious now if uh i don't know if there is an official like oh no this took place then or there i, I guess maybe i just never thought about it too much <laughs> during the movie <laughs> oh yeah it's, it's probably more than days or maybe even more than weeks but I, I, it was, like it it's not a period PC <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It's you know it's in the last few years this happened. Anyway, anyway it doesn't sure, matter. Sure. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so they, they arrive at the cabin and they see it's been broken into and they're kind of like, you know, it's like, okay, let's let's get it all set up so we can be comfortable for the weekend. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff with like you know try to explain to the brother. We we learned that the brother kind of left town you know once he was once because the, we found out that the mum got sick and. He kind of like skirted his responsibilities and just stayed away, and she was left to be with with the sick mother, uh, as as she was dying. And so we get some of this backstory stuff, and ultimately, like once they're setting up for for everything, they 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 find the seller, of course, right? I think it's their dog, because mm -hmm. uh, the the brothers got a dog with them, who does not last long. It must must be said. Um, uh, yeah. But they find the, the cellar door, and there's like the blood streak going into it, and they're all kind of like freaked out by this which i mean that's another thing that implies that it's not been that long is that i'm pretty sure this blood stain <laughs> wouldn't survive you know 
That's true. Yeah. About that long with it. <laughs> um, I mean, Dead Ape Blood, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure, maybe there's some different rules for the Dead Ape Blood. But, yeah. you know, they find all the ritual, the, the, the dead animals that have been hung up and all the rest of it. But the, the key thing, of course, is the book itself. Um, which I love that it's, like, like, see, like wrapped in, like, plastic and got barbed wire yeah. around it. Uh, because you're, you're thinking to yourself, so so when the, uh, the, the Jesus-looking dude, Eric, when he starts, like, sort of, <laughs> like, opening it up and, like, clipping the barbed wire to, and, like, <laughs> peeling it back so he can get into it, I'm like, do you really think this is a good idea? Like, they, I mean, I, the funny thing is, though, is I'm not necessarily critiquing it here. I'm, I'm more saying that I get his curiosity because if you found something that was sealed in barbed sure. wire, you'd be like, wait, why is it sealed in barbed What do they not want me to see? Like, I... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand the curiosity. I can understand wanting to open up the book and look at it. Um, I think taking, a, you know, a, a pencil and paper and, uh, you know, like mm. doing the, the shading and then actually speaking words aloud, that to me is like a little step too far. Like, I mean, maybe I've just seen too many horror movies that I feel like my first reaction would be like, ah, I should probably bring this to like a museum or something instead of saying the <laughs> words aloud. But... Well, I mean, I, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if you don't believe in supernatural stuff, though, you wouldn't necessarily like. You know, he would never think that anything's going to happen. I suppose. Yeah. I, I guess your argument is is that if it's valuable, <laughs> which he thinks it might be, maybe you wouldn't want to like damage it. So you would, you know, once once you think you've got something valuable, you would just okay. I'm going to make sure this is preserved, and I'm going to take it somewhere. Sure, he'll, yeah. He'll pay me for it, uh, handsomely, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, but of course, reading the the book uh, gives us the. Uh, you know the, the 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 evil force, you know, and because I, I actually couldn't remember if this movie had the uh, the POV like going through the forest shots, and it does. It doesn't have it much. Like it, it's not overused in this one because you know, go back to the original; it's used every ten minutes. Do you, you see like, the camera <laughs> yeah. going through the forest? Uh, here it's used just as he's reading the book, more or less, and kind of uh, me is outside, sort of walking around, you know, struggling with withdrawal, and you know it, it, it hits her and she freaks out and. She demands to, you know, be driven back, driven back to society, and they've all agreed not to take her, because obviously she's going to want this, because she wants to, you know, get back to society so she can get drugs or whatever. And they kind of refuse, and she steals the keys and goes in one of the cars and ends up driving off the you know, the, the trail into, like, a swamp. And this is where she, we get the... Yeah? Yeah. No, she sees, like, a, a vision of... I, I guess it's just supposed to be, like, herself. Like, yeah, it's herself, herself yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. road. Yeah. You're right, yeah, she sees, like, a vision of herself. But she drives off the road and into the swamp, and she ends up in, like, the veins, and... This is essentially this movie's version of the tree rape scene, which yeah. is a, a lot less goofy, um, yeah. I suppose you would say. Because it, it feels like there's some implied, like, movement, I suppose, but it, it feels a lot more like that she's just kind of caught in a web. So there's, like, a web of, like, tree veins that she's kind of trying to crawl through. And it's yeah. almost like it just feels like it's getting busier and busier, as if there's more and more veins, so it's harder for her to get out. But it does eventually sort of pull her, you know, her legs apart and whatever. Instead of the branch going in, though, it's more of like a parasite that crawls up her leg. Like this big slimy. Yeah, it, it looks kind of like uh, yeah, like almost like slug-like or something. Like it's kind of like very goopy. Um, but yeah, it's a, yeah, essentially still has that kind of same. Uh, it's I. I said it's a weird thing to say because it's obviously still very sexual, but it feels less sexual than sure <laughs> the the original. Where because the, the original had this thing where the branch just kind of shot in at a, like breakneck speed, whereas yeah. this kinda, <laughs> this kind of crawls up her leg and it's just because you know once it goes up the skirt you don't really see you know it's it's more. I guess this is more implied, even though arguably they're both obviously going where they're going, but right, <laughs> I, like I don't know. It, but anyway, I get you. <laughs> they end up finding her kind of in the forest, and they bring her back. And this is where she—this is where I was talking about. Where it, the, the, I think the visual of this is so creepy in the performance when she's like sitting in the bunk bed, and she's saying something's here. And obviously, everyone else at this point, there's nothing supernatural on yet. No one else is scared in that way. They're, they're just worried for her. They think this is her acting out and being crazy, and whatever. Um, but the movie then takes. Obviously, this is where things start to really ramp up. Where eventually she walks out into the main sort of area um i think maybe i've glossed over as well at, at this point where the dogs turned up kind of like beaten to death with a hammer uh under the the shed uh, outside yeah. uh because the, the the brother like goes into like the man to talk to her and he's banging on the walls and 
Um, because this is actually where they wanted to take. Yeah, 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 I glossed over this because this this is where they want to take her home because when he goes in to confront her, she's in the shower and she turns up the shower so warm that she starts yeah. scalding her own skin. Because this is the point yeah. in the movie where they want to take her into civilization again because she just has to go to a hospital. Like she's hurt herself now, so yeah. she has to go to a hospital. This is like such a simple scene, but like even this, like I don't know, really grosses me out. Just the idea, of just standing there and being pelted by like extremely hot water, like. I, I mean, I, I don't even know if, like, most showers, like, go up that high. Like, I feel like my shower, you know, cuts off a, after a little bit. But this is, like, s- like steamy, no, like, most, burn your skin water. <laughs> most normal showers, uh, at least in countries with laws, <laughs> uh, have, like, limits on their temperature, so you can't yeah. do this. Like, it's literally, I mean, I, I like my shower about, like, a third of the way up in terms of temperature. But even at the highest temperature, I would find it uncomfortably warm, and I, you know, I'd, I'd feel too hot to me. But it wouldn't actually, yeah. like, hurt me. It wouldn't damage me permanently. Whereas this is clearly causing, you know, <laughs> like serious skin problems. Yeah, and what I uh, what I like about the the deadites in this is like uh, in the original movies, it seems more like the deadites. It, it seemed like they kind of just wanted to go after like living people and kind of infect them. Uh, you know, and that was more the MO. And this, it kind of seems like part of their thing is, like, they want to torture, like, the people that they're inside. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like, so much of the the violence is, like, you know, kind of perpetrated on, like, themselves. You know, like, scenes like this. And then, you know, later we have, like, the, you know, scene where, you know, the other woman's, like, carving her face off and stuff. Like, Yeah, there's a... There's a lot of that going on because they they try to drive her back. The brother tries to drive her back, and the the the, the river's flooded, so the bridge is out. So it's, it's again, it's not overtly supernatural because in the in the original, or at least in the, at least in the second movie when it shows you this scene, it's like the bridge is like sort of curled up as if something's yeah. like physically like ripped it apart. This is just no. This is the water's you know the levels r- risen because the. And it had been like earlier. It had been like raining profusely. Like, oh yeah, it, yeah. It's it was it was pissing raining down. super hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but this is where the movie really ramps up because this is where she, she eventually comes in when they're debating what to do. She walks in the room with a shotgun and they have this tense sequence where they have to like lock her in the cellar, right? And she's acting all creepy. She's, you know, the hair's down. And this is where I think you, you get the, maybe the, is this the only other time where there's like the, the POV shot where it comes in the door? Uh, and it maybe. Because when it has, so that's when she finally says... <laughs> You hear, because you hear the whispers, you hear kind of like the whispering coming from her, where she's like, you know, one by one, we will take your soul. But then yeah. she just sort of, like, finally says out loud, you're all going to die tonight. And it's kind of that creepy, you yeah, know, it's, a- that, it's, it's, it's the trailer moment. It's the creepy trailer moment where the, 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 this is the moment you sell it all on. Yeah, and, like, they do, like, you know, they give her, like, a, it sounds like there's, like, a little voice modulation or something mm-hmm. going on, but it is, like, a, yeah, it, it's, like, a very kind of, like, low, uh, you know, kind of quality. Like, it's not, like, super overdone. Because uh, I feel like in the original, you know, it is very, like, high, screechy voices. Like, this mm-hmm. is more, like, kind of, like, a, yeah, more quiet, but still very creepy. It's, and it's still, it still noticeably feels like a dead eye, though. Like, it still feels like oh, they're, yeah, totally. they're, they're still kind of, like, honouring the feel of it, even though it's not exactly yeah. the same sound. Uh, but they lock her in the cellar, and they're obviously they're all freaking out because they get, you know, injured to your head. Uh, is it Eric that gets... Who gets stabbed in the foot? Someone gets stabbed in the foot here. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, think it's, I forget. I would. I would assume probably the one of the girls because they're the next. To well, no, because the, the the nurse uh, Olivia goes to the other room, and that's when all her stuff mm-hmm. starts. Because she she goes to get supplies to like patch someone else up. Okay. I, I actually can't remember. Uh, oh, yeah. But she goes to the other room, and she just like freezes in place. Like the supernatural force just kind of stops her from walking, and she starts to. Like uh, piss herself, basically. You know, we see we see the urine like run down her leg, mm-hmm. and um, basically she's just basically missing. And then eventually Eric goes to find her, and this is where things just go off the, you know, off the the, the wall because he comes in and she's carving up her face. She's like carved away yeah. like half of her her mouth. Like she's got like, this big smile going all the way up her cheek. Uh, yeah. If you can, if you can call it that, I mean, it's just kind of <laughs> a hole. But you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, it looked great. Like just a really fantastic gore. Yeah, and obviously he tries to, like, stop her, and, like, she just attacks him. She just comes after him, yeah. and we get this, like, horrific scene where she starts to stab him. And he's, he's wearing glasses, but she tries to stab him in the eye with a syringe. And she's just, yeah. like, stabbing, like, really, really quickly. 
and then he eventually puts up his hand, which almost makes it feel worse because then she's just stabbing his hand with a syringe repeatedly. Uh, yeah. Which, by the way, Eric is the character in this movie who by far it gets the most done to him. Like, this guy <laughs> goes through absolute hell throughout this movie. Because <laughs> he has this, he has the stabbing in the eye, he has the stabbing in the hand, he then, like, slips and, like, or maybe he slips first, but he slips and, like, hits his head on the it's toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and after he fights her off, because he actually has to kill her, he has to, like, bash her head in with, like, the edge of a toilet seat or the sink, even. And yeah. after that, he has to pull out, like, a, like, a, like the, the syringe it was needle. The, the syringe, yeah. yeah. Uh, from just like, out oh. under his eye, like through his eyelid. And it's just, yeah. oh, it's disgusting. Like, this, this part makes me cringe. And like <laughs> you, I'm really desensitized to a lot of this shit. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like this is just, like, you don't see this stuff in a lot of horror movies. Like, they're going after very, like, vulnerable places that you don't want to think about. Like, you, you think the palm of your hand, you know, that's not somewhere you want to be stabbed. Like, uh, you know, again, like a lot of movies usually just see someone getting stabbed in like the stomach or the back or, you know, they get like a, an axe to the head. Like, again, that just feels like very, you've seen that a million times like this, like, yeah, like stabbing someone in the glasses and then like in the hand, these like, yeah, like soft, sensitive spots. You, you don't want to think about like sharp things coming at them. But like, I, again, it's and it and it doesn't like shy away uh, from showing you stuff like you know, other movies, they might you know, something starts to get in close and then they'll cut away or whatever. Like this, it's not leaving anything to the imagination. Like, it's showing you, like, front and center what is going on. Yeah, I mean, the word visceral is what I used earlier, and that, that's, I yeah. think that's the best word to describe the, the violence in this. Everything feels so visceral and gory, uh, which is great. It was like, <laughs> it's like a breath of fresh air where I feel like no movies had been giving me that for a while when I saw this yeah. in 2013. Totally. And, yeah. So, so I can say from here, it just keeps escalating where... You know, we go, there's like a moment of quiet maybe between each of them, but ultimately, like, one by one, they do literally get taken, where we have, like, because this entire time, you have uh, Mia in the, the cellar, just kind of, you know, she's doing the thing where she's looking up through the, you know, through the, the, the cellar door, and she's down there being kind of creepy. That, that was the moment I was talking about, when they, when they first shut, when they first throw her in and they shut the door, she's actually just standing down there looking up when they shut the door, even though she's literally just went down. You know, they're yeah. just throwing her down, like, head first, and she's still somehow standing there creepily looking up, the light shaft hitting her. <laughs> every every line of dialogue that comes out of her mouth when she's dead uh like, down there, is wonderful. Uh, yeah. Like, a- every line she has with uh, Olivia, who... Not Olivia, sorry, the, the, the girlfriend, because we haven't even... I mean, we barely mentioned this character. This is the one who's the least, kind of, like, characterized as the girlfriend who David brings with him, the, the brother. And Natalie, she just kind of is there. She's kind of this fifth wheel the whole time. But she goes to try and get some stuff to help with Eric and David. And she ends up, she's in, she's on her own in the kitchen, which is kind of across from where the cellar door is. And Mia's kind of like saying things to her and kind of creeping her out. The lights go off. And because she got bit, like Mia bit her in the, the, the initial like, your struggle when she first showed up with a shotgun and they're kind of, like, trying to like, grab the shotgun off of her and all the rest of it. She ends up, like, her hand gets infected. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where there's some moments that kind of, like, or, you know, they're kind of winking back to the original trilogy, where yeah. the idea of the hand getting infected and her eventually cutting off her, or well, it's actually, like, her whole arm. She's got, like, an electric knife that she sort of saws through her arm. Yeah. Um, And this is really brutal, but I, I, I love, it. like, it keeps cutting back to me and she's like, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you cut it off, bitch. Don't you do it. And like, she's, yeah. like, she's really like <laughs> laying it in. Like, so her running commentary as she's like freaking out and this like infection is spreading up her arm and she cuts it off. My favorite part of this though is that when the other two find her, when they come in and find her and the lights are off and she sort of turns around and she's like, I got it off. I got it off. Um, is that the arm is still like dangling from like one like bit of flesh like one tendon yeah. <laughs> it's just sort of the arm is still kind of hanging off and then it's sort of like as she turns around it eventually sort of rips and it falls off completely but that just as extra I, that extra detail just makes it feel so grisly yeah and it has a such like a good sound effect too like once it comes off it just feels like this kind of like i don't know this like sludge like it's like it's like oh it's so good oh yeah it's so good so obviously they, they, they try to patch her up but she she ends up getting like taken into the cellar you know she ends up in the cellar she ends up like uh like you know going to actually 
There's so much stuff happens here so quickly that I'm tra- I'm struggling to remember the order of events because maybe it was this before she cut off her arm. I I think it's actually before she cut off her arm. She ends up in the cellar. You know the, you know, the, the uh, kiss, kiss me you dirty C bomb. Oh and all yeah, that. yeah yeah yeah. Um, where yeah, Mia, honestly, I forget as well. Where Mia like slices her tongue down the middle with an exacto knife. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that's another one that's like. Yeah. <laughs> because they have because uh, like, one of the steps going down into the cellar. Uh, I, I refer to it as Chekhov's step because you see it kind of sinking and almost breaking every time someone uses it. And it's when she ends up in the basement that she starts. You know, she tries to run up the stairs and it, it breaks, and that's what gets her trapped down there. Uh, yeah. And you know. It's, it's it's really good stuff because when uh, they come in and like rescue her from the cellar, uh, she she looks up at David and says, "Your little sister's uh, being raped in hell." Um, you know she's not here anymore, kind of thing. Like every line of dialogue that comes out of her mouth is perfect. It's all it's all this evil, like possessed, horrible stuff. Um, I love how violent. It is. Yeah, <laughs> all of it's just great. Oh yeah, no, totally. Like it, it matches like the the violence that you're seeing on screen. It's like the you know the dialogue that comes out of their mouth has to kind of be equally as like shocking and brutal as you know the, the stuff that they're doing too. So it you know worked really well. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's glorious stuff. But then of course, uh, you know, girlfriend Natalie turns into a dead eye, and that leads to because I, I do like the you know while Mia is still in the cellar, it does end up being the two guys who are left alone, which again kind of harkens back to the original film because it's very odd that it's, there was the two men who were kind of left mm-hmm. by the end, uh, and mm-hmm. obviously eventually it was just Ash, but you know it was the two men who were kind of left on their own yeah. uh, after everyone else. So again, they kind of harken back to the original stuff. And then things keep getting crazy because then we get nail guns. We get the nail guns that are firing <laughs> across the room, which again, yeah. Eric gets the brunt of the nail gun uh, stuff. Um, so, like, the, the, the entire scene is just, like, again, it, it barely, it slows down briefly in between some of this stuff just to sort of, like, break it up where, you know, Eric's starting to look at the book and he's noticing that, like, it's, like, mimicking things from the book, you know, the scalding of the waters, like, in the book, kind of. They're cutting yeah. off the arms there, and it's like, oh, like, it's going to take five souls, and then once five souls have been taken, uh, it'll, the, the demon who's behind all of this will be reborn, kind of thing. Which yeah. is kind of an Evil Dead 2 as well, it's kind of a, a, a new take on that idea. Um, mm-hmm. But the demon's very different in this, of course, and it leads to the, all the big stuff at the ending. So David at this point has accepted that he probably has to kill his sister, but... And he's going to burn her at first, but he basically thinks of a plan, which, as we see it happen, is revealed that he tries to, essentially, a loophole, where he buries her alive, but it was set up earlier in the film that she actually did OD at one point and was technically declared dead and had to be resuscitated with a defibrillator. He essentially has a makeshift defibrillator, which he then uses to, like, so he buries her until it seems like the supernatural stuff has stopped, and then he, like, wakes her back up. And we get this emotional scene of him trying to, like, resuscitate her, uh, mm-hmm. and she gets back up. Which leads to essentially something that I, you know, I kind of avoided talking about earlier on, when we're not doing spoilers, but... <laughs> this movie kind of flips it a little bit, where... She's actually the final girl of the movie. Because as you're yeah. watching the movie, she's the, she's the main dead eye. She's the <laughs> one who gets infected first, she's the one who's, like, seems to have, like, started to spread it to everyone else. She's the one who is the main kind of like monster for, you know, two thirds of the movie, yeah. and then things flip where she comes back, and it seems like they've gotten away with that. However, I love this actually that he because you see him spending the time to cut up the bodies of the others to make sure because you know we find out that burning them, uh, burning them alive or dismemberment are the only ways to like truly kill a dead eye, and we see yeah. him do that to Olivia. We see him do that to Natalie. Um, but Eric, who was still alive until he sort of dies from his injuries in the basement when they're getting uh, stuff down there, um, he never actually kills him, though. So I actually do love that the movie sets up for the, the reason why the dead eights aren't gone, because he never disposed of Eric. So when Eric pops up as a dead eight uh, here and carries things over, because he's about to leave with Mia, Eric pops up, he has to fight off Eric, but just as he's about to set the place on fire and everything's burning... He turns into a dead eye. You see it in David's eyes, and it's like he's number five. Five. Yeah, yeah he's the fifth person. Uh, which does lead to an interesting debate about should me account because technically she still yeah. has a soul. <laughs> she's you know, she's still, she's back alive again. But it's a, w- it's a loophole. <laughs> I would theorize though that that's why the demon when when it arrives is so determined to get her. 
That makes sense. Yeah. Because technically, she did get away. She, she, you know, she, you know, it had her, but then she was like brought back. So, yeah. but this is where the big finale happens, and uh, it starts literally raining blood, which it said in the book it would do. And That's so good. It is so good. And we have the, the demon who is, you know, I, I, is it Mia herself that looks like the demon? I, I, I can't, or it's, just the woman. Yeah, uh, it looks like an evil version of her, which um, would make sense. And again, that's even kind of a nod to, I guess, Army of Darkness uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Having like the... Because uh, um, she, she, you know, she gets out of the mud and she's like, the, the blood's coming down. And Mia immediately obviously has to run and there's a bit of a, you know... Escape. She ends up crawling through the the, the little uh, hole in the tunnel underneath Ooh. the shed. When that knife slices her, when it goes through the wall, and uh, it's like uh, whatever the jagged, like uh, oh, that's when she gets that that's when she gets into the shed though and goes behind the yeah. wall on the other side. Yeah, because yeah. she crawls into the hole because that's where the dog was found. And then she gets into the shed, and mm-hmm. then she goes in behind the wall. And yeah, and this is something that I said as I was watching this is that I love in movies which don't don't do it often enough, and this is what you're talking about. Mm-hmm is when blades cut you in weird awkward places or when they just catch you in a weird angle because so many movies they'll have like blades and they always you know behead someone or slit the throat perfectly or stab in the chest like seeing a cut or a slice at a really like weird degree angle that like because this just kind of catches her above the knee it's not like a super deep cut but it's just enough to go like yeah and it's uh, not even like so much uh you know when it's like cutting into her but it's like when she starts pulling the blade back that like really gets me especially it's like a very like um like feels like a very like rusted jagged like knife or whatever she's using and then yeah just the the pulling it back again is so yeah like just in your face and visceral and um yeah and it's such a testament to the movie that like there's so many yeah like like you're saying like awkward stabbings or stuff that you don't see in movies that like you kind of forget like about some of them like i i totally forgot this scene you know after i've not watched it for a while when i was watching it last night i was like oh yeah man this is like also like horrible <laughs> <laughs> tim's catch trying to sabotage the recording yeah. and he's already succeeded <laughs> once yeah uh, but uh, there was a uh, t- it was just like we were talking about earlier with the syringe in the hand it's just like a yeah. really awkward like like, I think a syringe in and of itself doesn't feel like a stabbing weapon, but once you start having yeah. someone going like this really quickly, like, into someone's hand, it actually feels quite, like, oh, that's nasty, oh. Yeah, and, and, like, honestly, like, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I feel like a syringe probably can't do, like, a ton of damage, but when you are, like, stabbing it that hard and quickly and in those spots, like, it becomes, like, a, you know, pretty formidable weapon or at least something you don't want to happen. Yeah. So... No, super nasty, but she gets into the shed, and she's, like, going for some, like, trying to, like, find something to use as a weapon, and she ends up, and the camera goes up to the chainsaw, and it's like, oh, she's going to grab the chainsaw. So, again, harkening back to, like, sort of traditional Evil Dead things is the idea of the chainsaw, right? Uh, although, unlike the other movies, she actually, we actually spend time here, there's some tension, and she has to try and fill it with, with gas, because it's not getting any fuel in it. Um, yeah. And there's a whole chase as she's, like, trying to run away with a chainsaw, and... The, the demon's coming for her. Uh, she's... I, do, I feel like I say this like a, a lot um, sometimes, but like it really does feel like a, a boss fight in like a horror game or something. Like, yeah. You know, like... I, I think what I like about it is that it feels like she's just narrowly just getting away constantly. Like she's just oh, making yeah. it out with the skin of her teeth like every step of the way. And she ends up hiding underneath the, uh, the, the truck that's been left there still. Because you know, the other car's obviously in the ditch. <laughs> and yeah. the demon just flips it. But I, when she's underneath the car, she's able to, like, slice the, the demon's feet feet off, right? So it slows her down a little bit. But the demon then flips the truck, and we end up with this this thing where her hand is trapped underneath the truck. Mm. And so this is the thing where it's actually actively, like, testing us. It's teasing us. It's saying, hey, <laughs> in Evil Dead 2, Ash has to cut off his, his hand with a chainsaw. So you immediately, as a fan of Evil Dead, you're looking at this going... Oh, she's going to have to do that. She's going to have to cut off her hand. But then it does this thing to make it nastier. It's like, no, she can't actually reach the chainsaw. So she has <laughs> to just pull her hand away and just Oof. have it rip away. She has to, like, rip her arm out from under the car. And we see it all just, sort of, again, much like the arm falling off earlier, we just see, like, you know, bits, like, sticking and having to, like, be ripped. And it's, it feels so disgusting. It's, yeah, it's like a way. I don't really think of, like, bones this way, but, like, 
I don't, I don't know. It, it makes it like extra, like I don't, disgusting or like fragile. Just to think of like, oh, you can just kind of like pull your bones out like that. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I love about it. I love that it teases like traditional Evil Dead things, and then says, "No, we're going to top it. We're going to do something yeah. even worse that makes it feel nasty and 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 brutal and all these things." Um, and she gets out. The the, the deadites coming or the demons coming for her, and you know she says, "I'll feast on your soul." Uh, and so we get one one liner in the whole movie, and it's right here at the end. They've saved it for this final moment, where she says, "Feast on this." bitch or whatever or mother no it's mother effer she F- says F- yeah. Effer, yeah yeah who's on this mother fuzzer. effer oh uh, yeah male fuzzer yes of course <laughs> um and she just sticks the, the 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 chainsaw into her mouth and see the see the see the shot from the side the profile shot of the chainsaw literally just being held in her head as there's just gallons of blood spurting yes <laughs> it just is the visual is beautiful and the most, you know, obviously it's dark and violent and all these things, but it's, it's one of these things where somehow they achieved this tone in this movie where it goes over the top with the violence without ever feeling silly. Yeah. I uh, I remember, like, when, uh, I think it was, was it It Chapter 2? I, I remember they kept making a big deal saying, like, oh, we have this one scene that's, like, the bloodiest scene mm. ever in a horror movie that uses the most blood or whatever. And I keep, I kept thinking about this movie, like, I don't know, like, I mean, when you have, like, the, like, freaking rain is blood, like, I don't know, it, it feels like this is, like, bloodier to me than that. I mean, maybe if you measure, like, the actual gallons of blood or whatever that they use, maybe it works out, but this still feels, like, way bloodier to me. Yeah, I have to know off the top of my head, just because it was mentioned on when I was watching this, and I was streaming it. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the movie used 7,000 gallons of fake blood. 5,000... 000- <laughs> 5,000 of which was in this final scene. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so, that's, that's a lot of blood. It's a lot of fake blood. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it it, uh, it works out great, though, because it, it looks so goddamn cool. And, uh, and it's, yeah, worth, it's, it's worth mentioning that as far as possible, they're using practical effects for, you know, as yeah. much as they can. Obviously, stuff like the arm falling off, there has to be a little bit of CG and stuff like you know, or even the face, like when you can see inside her mouth. But yeah, obviously some of that has to be CG, but for the most part, it's doing practical effects as best it can. Yeah, and if a CG is ever used, it doesn't it like doesn't look horrible, or it's it's not like noticeably bad or outdated or anything. Like I don't think there's really any part of this movie that looks bad. Yeah, now, and I remember I knew I loved this movie, but I'd forgotten some of the moments. So so yeah, things like the blade. I'd forgotten the box cutter moment or the, the exacto knife. Uh, I'd forgotten like so many, so, so many of these good little violent moments. I'd forgotten some of the details. I, I obviously they, I remember the chainsaw going through the head at the end because it's like delightful. But I mean, I I think the like part of it is that a lot of those scenes, like in any other movie, that would be like the standout scene. Yeah. <laughs> like in, in this movie, especially like you mentioned earlier, it's like uh, the escalation is so quick that and, you know it's like a roller coaster ride, like you know, once you're kind of on it, it's, like, not, like, forgettable, but, like, so much stuff is going on that, like, you don't have time to focus on it and, like, internalize mm-hmm. it. So when you're watching again, you're like, oh, Jesus, I forgot there's this part and that part, and, like, oh, man, this just comes right after this. Like, it, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's de- it's delightful. The way it escalates is delightful. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it ends with her standing tall. She's gotten through her addiction. Uh, and she's came out, and she's lost something, you know, she's lost her hand, she's, I mean, she's lost family members, but she's come out on the other end stronger than ever, uh, and yep. walks away somewhat triumphantly, I would say. Um, I will, if I have a complaint, honestly, about the movie, is that there's a, there's, there's a mid credit scene and a post credit scene. The post credit scene, of course, is just Bruce Campbell saying groovy, which is delightful, and I yep. never, I never feel bad that I stay all the way to the end of the credits just for him saying groovy. And, and this was really <laughs> cool, uh, when I saw it in theaters, uh, because, like, Nowadays, the, you know, end credits thing is such a given, and I feel like you, you know, it's mostly, like, you know, comic book movies and stuff, and I feel Mm -hmm. like you always hear about it, like, five days before you actually go to see the movie. This was such a delightful surprise when I was first seeing it, and just decided to stay uh, towards the end for, you know, hey, what the heck, and um, was not expecting this at all. It was really cool. And actually, another little Easter egg at the end is that uh, towards the end of the credits, the original tape from the cabin starts playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Which is a really nice little touch. 
Uh, but if I have a complaint though, is that the mid credit <coughs> scene I think is kind of just unnecessary and like it's because she she she's walking down the road, she gets picked up by someone who's going to help her, and she's in the back seat, and it does this sort of like final like, scary moment where she opens her eyes and the camera like you know, the music stings as if oh is there something still dangerous? And I'm like you know what she went through hell. I'm taking my happy ending, and it's not even like that she's a deadite because she doesn't look a deadite here at the end. It's just, it's just like a, I don't know. It's, it's going for this little, little extra dun 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 moment, and I just I don't think it needs it. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you've been through so much with her, and like, you really like her as a character. So, I mean, I would definitely love to see her battling more deadites in a sequel or something. But you know, in terms of just like this one movie, it's like, all right, let's just end it there. Yeah, yeah we don't need. To think about that. Yeah, we don't. But I mean, obviously, the little Bruce Campbell thing is cool, but <laughs> yeah, we didn't need uh, that mid credit scene. But I mean, the like, like I say, like I, I think the pacing and how it escalates throughout the movie, and and watching it again for maybe like the fourth time or whatever it's been, maybe the fifth time this this was for me. Um, the pacing is so exceptional. Where once things start to happen, it never really lets up, and you just. It's constantly escalating, and I think you said roller coaster ride. And people say that about horror movies all the time. You know, why do people like horror Damn. movies? Oh, it's like a roller coaster ride. In terms of its pacing, this is genuinely like one that I would say actually kind of is. Like, I, yeah, I feel like you know it, that that term is thrown around a lot for horror movies, and I don't think for the yeah. most part it actually holds true. <laughs> Whereas this, it actually does feel like a thrill ride where it's constantly up in itself and it's constantly doing something else that's nasty or makes you cringe, whether it be a, a, an awkward stabbing or an awkward nail gun moment or, you know, whatever it is. Like, it's constantly doing things that are going, oh, and e like, and, and I watch a lot of horror movies. The fact that this repeatedly finds things to make me go, ugh, uh, is impressive. Yeah. Yeah, especially like after multiple viewings, it still like holds its impact. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty. Man, it's a. Uh, so he. Uh... Oh yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh... Yeah, so a after this, then he did "Don't Breathe," mm -hmm. and then uh, did he? Did Fetty Alvarez do anything after that? I assume he's probably working on whatever he's doing. Next, let me let me click at his name, and I'll tell you what he's working on. Um, he's working on a. Oh no, he did do a movie. He did a movie called The Girl in the Spider's Web. Oh, so, oh. He, oh, so he did that? He did the, uh... So, so that's the, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo reboot movie. Okay. I, I'll Wait, be honest, is I, that, uh, I had no idea he did that. Is that already out, or is that coming out? No, it came out in 2018. Oh, I had no idea. Uh, no, because, I mean, I'm just saying, like... The, the only reason why I'm asking is because, like, this is a shame. It's that, like... <clears throat> you know, like, uh, we haven't gotten, like, a, a new movie from him, like, every year or something, because, I mean, uh, you know, th these, those first two movies are just so, so damn good. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I like this more than Don't Breathe, but I think Don't Breathe was, like, a lot of fun as well, but, I mean, I would love to see him do, like, another, like, really big, extra gory horror movie, like, you know, it, it, you know, if he doesn't want to do another franchise thing, that's totally cool, like, it seems like he has, like, a lot of original ideas and stuff, that, so it'd be cool to see him. Do whatever. Well, but. Yeah, hopefully he's back in another movie soon. <laughs> uh, he he is credited as, as the writer of Don't Breathe Two, although he's not listed. Okay. As, he's not listed as director though. So I mean, we'll see if he actually ends up directing that. But um, I forgot they were doing a sequel to that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hopefully he's back with something soon because he like I've really liked both of his his horror movies. I mean, Girl in the Spider's Web. I don't. I mean, I never heard it. I, honestly, that that movie came and went with almost no fanfare. I don't think I mean, it's not a horror movie. Obviously, it's more of a thriller, but. Uh, I don't think I heard anyone talking about it when it came out, <laughs> so uh, it is what it is. But I uh, no, I, I love this movie, and I, you know, there is it's definitely not a perfect movie. Like I said, the mid credits scene I think is unneeded. I do think the brother character is a bit bland. I think it's the, you know the, the the relationship with Mia serves a purpose, and I think it works well for what it's doing. But yeah. I think he himself is actually quite bland as a character. Uh, I agree with that. But you know, it's fine because. Like, we're here for the, 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 the thrills, we're here for the violence and the gore, and we're here for the mythology. I like that it adds this whole stuff to the mythology where we get the demon who's behind all of this, like the demon yeah. who releases the deadites because it wants to like come to, to life and come back to Earth and, you know, chaos reign and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. And, like, even, like, you know, the... I guess we didn't talk about it much, but, like, um, 
yeah, like, you know, on a technical level, there's a lot of really good stuff working with here. Like, the, you know, cinematography, I think, is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, they have that opening shot of, like, the, you know, overhead with the trees, which, uh, you know, is, like, really nice. And then, uh, <clears throat> also the, uh, I do like the music in it. Like, you were talking about kind of, like, the, the tinkly little piano stuff. Like, yeah. that's, I don't like know, that whatever. stuff, but I do, I'll tell you what I do like. See when the, the fifth soul is, mm -hmm. uh, taken? I love the siren that's in the music. Yeah, yeah. There's like, it's, it's like, a, it sounds like Silent Hill. Do you know in Silent Hill when it's turning into the nightmare yeah. world? It reminds me of that where you hear the siren as if, and it's it's just it's not like there's an actual siren in the in the movie. It's just in the music. There's a siren sound. Yeah, and like there are other times throughout it where there's kind of like this big sweeping, like it almost you know sounds like the music is screaming and stuff. Like when yeah. stuff starts getting like chaotic and like you know the the deadites are you know, like, uh, being very loud and stuff, and, like, I, that stuff, I, I think, uh, worked really well, so... Just... As, much, as much as I critique some of the emotional piano stuff early on, because it felt like it was trying a bit too hard, uh, I do think yeah. a lot of the music, once it gets going later on, the film is quite good. Uh... Yeah. But just, like, I mean, uh, just suffice it to say, though, it's just, all together, it's just a really good package, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, that's why, that's why my favourites of the last ten years. I, I love the Evil Dead reboot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, it's got so many things going for it that um, it's, hard, it's hard to fault too much. So uh, yeah. I guess we're ready to rate the film then, Tim. Uh, what are you What are you thinking? Uh, so I like it a lot. Again, um, it's not my uh, absolute favorite, you know, the original trilogy, but I think it is such a an awesome, fun remake, reboot, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, it's just... Uh, uh, yeah, there really isn't much, uh, much to complain about. Like, again, maybe a few very tiny nitpicks here and there, but, I mean, really, altogether, it's very solid. I, I think it says something about the quality of the movie, because I feel like the nitpicks we're saying are the sort of things that in another horror movie that's pretty good, we would give it a pass, because we don't expect horror movies to necessarily get all these things right, because horror totally. movies, by their nature, yeah. you know, especially movies like this, because... Like you say, the, the complaint where, like, the, the brother's a bit bland, it's not like the characters in the original Evil Dead are that interesting outside totally. of, you know, one or two of them, so... Yeah, uh, and, it, and it's not like, I mean, uh, what do you what do you really want, though? Like, it's not like, uh, alright, well, do you want him to be, like, some surfer character that's going like, whoa, dude, you know what I mean? Like, that wouldn't be good either, like, it's, like, sometimes when a movie really doesn't have that much of a flaw, you kind of try to find something just so you kind of have something to say, you know? I, I, um, I guess that's what I'm saying, is compared to a lot of horror movies, we don't necessarily... We're holding some things in this to a higher standard because the stuff that's yeah. good is that good. That, totally. Whereas yeah. other movies, it's like, okay, well, we don't really care about the, if the characters are that interesting because it's a movie where we watch people be stabbed. And as long as that stabbing's yeah. good, we, we don't really care. But the standard on this is so high across the board with other elements that, okay, yeah, some of the characters are a little bit bland. All right. Yeah. But, uh, no, so... um. But uh, to get to my rating, though, I'm going to give it a a solid nine. Um, yeah, I, I think it's terrific. Um, really isn't much to, you know, like, critique or complain about. It's uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to give it a nine out of ten. Uh, I think it's a fantastic movie that succeeds exceptionally at what it's trying to do. Uh, it's uh, it's just it's just so much fun. Like, I, I, yeah. I, this movie is just so much fun to me. Um, that I, I, you know, and I, I do find it more fun than Evil Dead 2. It's like, you know, it's, for me, I, you know, I mean, obviously I love Evil Dead 2, but like, I, I don't think that some people would say, oh, well, but you know, <coughs> surely Evil Dead 2 is the more fun movie because it has the comedy and it has the, the wackiness. And I'm like, no, the, the, the visceral, like, nature of this is, is more funny to me. Like, uh, mm -hmm. fun comes in many flavors and varieties. And, uh, sure. I guess I would I say mean, that. I mean, for me, it's probably going to depend on, like, the mood I'm in. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I agree, though. I mean, I think they're both um, spectacular, but, uh, you know, in, in different ways. Um, I, yeah, I mean, Evil Dead, like, I mean, it's, like, my favorite movie, so I, I gave that a 10 out of 10. But, uh, I mean, I think I am rating <laughs> this higher than, uh, I, I forget the exact score I gave the first Evil Dead. That might have been a 9 as well, but uh, I'm... Um, pretty sure though, I, I'm giving this a higher rating than Army of Darkness, which I, I mean, I still love obviously, but mm. yeah, I mean, no. I'd probably say it's, this is easily better than that one at least. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I mean, I like it more than the, uh, the original three, but I mean, Army of Darkness is definitely the weakest one. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I will say that after this this series of rewatches, I do think my my choice of Evil Dead one or two will probably vary based on my mood, <laughs> because sure. they're, they're both doing very different things, and I actually I think I appreciate Evil Dead one a lot more now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it is. But, but yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's uh, you know, I mean, it's shorter than maybe other franchises, but uh, man, what a what well, a solid franchise. <laughs> Evil Dead Rise is uh, in the works, so yeah, it's probably going to be then, set in a city. So we'll see how that works out. I mean, obviously we have the TV show, but you know, it's you can keep the TV show separate from the movie. But yeah. I mean, well, I do it, love the TV show though. It's kind of funny though because it has a three season TV show. It actually ends up being longer than other franchises in terms of runtime. Like there's actually more Evil Dead <laughs> to watch now if you're going to watch the TV show, which you should because yeah. it's a fun continuation of the Ash character. Uh, but hey, there you go. That is uh, Evil Dead 2013. So uh, if you've made it this far on the review, put the word. <coughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't have one. Um, there's not uh, an obvious choice Grandpa? in here. Grandpa? Yeah, I think it was the name of the dog. It was the name of the dog, yes. It's a weird name for the dog, but it was the name yeah. of the dog. Okay, yeah, put the word Grandpa in the comments there if you did this far. <laughs> um, you can, of course... Uh, actually, no, I'll make, let me make Tim do the thumbnail, uh, his pose first. Uh, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Three, two... One pause. <laughs> Naturally, you can of course uh, like and subscribe. Liking is super important on YouTube. It lets the algorithm know that we're worth recommending. So please do hit the like button and comment and subscribe and all those things. Uh, we mentioned Patreon earlier. Patreon.com/slash/mailfuzz.tv if you want to support us financially. And of course, you can catch us on the Twitters at Screams Midnight. So please do. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed the October thon and those. A little bit left to go, I think. I mean, we're recording this in advance, so it's not like we're actually in, you know, the 20-something of October right now. Uh, so I have no idea how many episodes are left, but hopefully you're enjoying everything. And, uh, yeah, look forward to more horror movie discussions. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys, and we will see you next time.